Where is the lady who is going to introduce me? You are not going to introduce me anymore. Hello. Hello, my friend. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friends. Hello, campus party. Can I see your hands, please? Welcome to campus party. Welcome to day one. And especially for day one, we have one of the most influential authors of all time but also somebody who one of his bestsellers actually published 140 million times, has been translated in 73 languages. And you pretty much know what I'm talking about, The Alchemist, like that's the book where you can take every sentence out and frame it and put it above your bed. I've done that, I've done that, believe me. <laughs> But also the reason why we love him is because he's an open and modern author. He is one of the most influential celebrities in social media with four million Twitter users. And five. Five? Five, five and a half. Five and a half. Okay, I hope the eight million <laughs> fan book, uh, Facebook pages uh, are still nine, up to. Nine point two. <laughs> Bad homework. See? Times are moving fast. <laughs> but also, one of the things which we really admire at you is that in a time where book publishing is struggling and old media is scared of the internet, he uploaded books for free. And guess what? He is still selling books. A lot. And of course, mostly important why we love Paolo Coelho so much is because he, like us, believes that you can do everything what we dream of. So look around you guys. Is there anything we can't make happen? Is there anything we can't dream of, especially when we work together. Look around you guys, that's what you're here. Work together, dream and make it happen. Welcome, Paolo Coelho. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for coming. I'm going to speak for 20 minutes giving you an overall idea about content and technology. And then for the next 40 minutes, we go to the Q&A. Are you, can you hear clear, loud and clear? Yes? Okay. So the first thing is to congratulate Paco, who is here. Uh, let's an applause to Paco because thanks to stand up, Paco. I know that it's not easy to come and to share with people this new idea that it is to rewrite the code not only of Europe, but I think that we are in a moment that we need to rewrite everything. Having said that, let me stick to my main point here. The Bible starts with the first sentences, in the beginning, it was the word, or the verb. So, we started, becoming civilized people because we were able to communicate. 
And the whole story of literature goes from this. Literature, and there you can include poems, you can include prose, you can include essays. Contrary to what people said and still say, was always dependent on technology. Always, always. So at the very beginning, they needed to write short sentences because the transmission of these thoughts would be through oral tradition. So the major classics of literature at the very beginning, and there you count gigantic epopeas of three, four thousand verses, where small verses that could be transmitted to the next generation. That is uncovered. So, then we move to the technology of writing in a physical support. I can give you several examples from clay tablets to papyrus in Egypt. And that means that we could somehow condense a thought, a feeling that, uh, well, it was important for us to share. Normally what is funny about this is that we are not teaching other people and there are no books about it, how to build pyramids. They were teaching or sharing with other people how do we feel at that very moment in time. Then we go to, uh, after the papyrus, that it was very fragile, very, very fragile, difficult to travel, we go to parchment. Please take into consideration that I'm talking about technology. I'm not talking about literature. The new technology, it was a roll, a scroll, that you could read. You could read. And again, the text should be fit in a very small space, so every time that you want to scroll, the scroll, you could read. A giant technological leap is when they say the scrolls are fine but very difficult to carry and very difficult to read. So they move to something called codex. What it is a codex? A codex is a skin of animal, a parchment. They use the same in the scrolls. But you, you can write and you can just open the leaves. So the, cod the codex was portable. It is the book as we see today. So that you pass the leaves, not pages, not pages. Pages is a recent invention. They used to write only one side of the, the codex. But again, it was very difficult. And then it comes this crazy person who is going to use the support of a codex, but he had this brilliant idea of let's do it in an industrial scale. His German, his, his name is Gutenberg, so he goes there and say, okay, 
There was printing already. You could print, carve on wood and print. But Gutenberg invite, uh, invented a system that you could move the letters. And by moving the letters, it was cheaper, it was easy to do it. And you can imagine how did the monks who used to copy the codex, how did they feel? They said, my God, now everybody can read. Now everybody has access to contents. So we should try to destroy this demon, the printing press, because from the moment that people can read, they can judge. They can have their own versions on the subject. So I think that the monks by then, when they saw Gutenberg printing horror, the Bible, that was a sacred book only for a few people to read, the monks probably feel like publishers now. They said, now we don't have control about anything anymore. Gutenberg printed the Bible, and by doing this, he started a movement, because Gutenberg died, well, he was poor, he died, but the merchants of Venice in Italy, they said, good idea, this new technology works. So they bought, or probably they stole, the idea of Gutenberg. And with this idea, this technological idea, that it was the printing press, there was Renaissance. There was this movement that changed the way that we approach to people. And if we jump to today, you see the same reaction to internet. It's like now we have a technological invention that it is internet, that it is you. You are the avant-garde. You are who really counts at this very moment because the classic industries, they are thinking, how should I control content? And we are here making a gigantic effort to be here, not to control content, but to share content. We understand that by sharing content, we can change the world. So internet is at the same time a blessing for us, but for the classic establishment, the system, it is still seen as an anathema, something that is totally out of order, and you should use this invention that it was not created by the authors, but by the publishers called copyright. Copyright is not, as you may think today, an idea that, oh, we need to pay the authors. No, 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 no. Copyright was an invention. We needed to pay the book, the physical thing, the publisher. Later on, of course, uh, they used this word to, to the writer. But the origin, it was to pay for the platform for the support for the thing. So, to cut a long story short, back in 2008, when I started being totally fascinated by the possibility 
to have direct access to readers, to newspapers. I started allowing my contents to be totally free, for free in internet. I created a site called The Pirate Coelho. Everybody could go there. Of course, I don't have the rights of the translations. So I have to cheat a little bit. So I asked friends to put my books there. And I just facilitated, well, links to different translations. And here we are, and what I noticed was from the moment that I started facilitating my contents, meaning my books, contrary to what they say, you are going to sell less, I start to sell more. Because if a story, if a content, it is an important content, people are going to treasure. We are not a bunch of pirates who are just doing this and that and that. We understand that we are hardworking people. I can imagine for Paco and for all of you to be here, how difficult it is. So at the end of the day, people are going to pay. You cannot be greedy. Greedy is the destruction of... It's for me. <laughs> so, what I see today, uh, and yeah, in time to finish, what I see today is that the more you share, the more you receive and you share because you need to share. It is an instinct. I can be, I don't know where, in front of the Brandenburg Gate, seeing a sunset. And if I'm alone, I'm devastated. This will be very oppressive. But I can be in a train station, in love with someone, and everything will be fantastic, will be great. Why? Because I have someone to share. I have someone to share my experience. So basically, this is the idea. We share because we need to share. Otherwise, we will not be here. We are here because we are a product of our previous generations who had sharing as an impulse. So I finished my 20 minutes and now the floor is yours. And I wonder who is going to ask the first question. The microphone is here with my... Thank you. You know what? A few years ago, I read uh, a list. The worst fears of humankind. And I thought, the worst fear of humankind is death. No. Death goes in the fifth place. Then on the fourth place, we have fear of financial problems. On the third place, we have fear of sickness, which is understandable. Sometimes it's better to die than to be sick. On the second place, believe it or not, this was a scientific research. Fear of bugs and insects. And on the first place is the fear that you are facing now, fear of speaking in front of an audience. So 
Let's block this fear. Who will be the first one? The gentleman there. I like his bird. Look. Uh, some water. Ah. Uh, Mr. Coelho, what do you think about the future of printed books? Is it a dying technology, a fast dying technology, Thank to you. use your words, or um, is it just changing its uh, purpose, its use case? And big fan, by the way. Uh, if we're talking the future about of books, I think the style of writing is going to change. Okay, so in 50 years from now, we're not going to write as we write now. Again, literature is behind technology. Technology is dictating, uh, is dictating the way that writers write. Although they say, oh, no, 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 but it's true. Huh? As for the future of books, the physical book, as we have now, some that I signed, they will continue. Like theater continues after the advent of, of uh, movies. As opera continues after records and things like this. But first we're going to move to a different platforms like Kindle, Nook, I don't know if you experience these new platforms. Today, I read mostly in, in Kindle or Nook. I have problems with Nook because Nook, you can only buy books on US. But Kindle, you can buy books everywhere. So I have a Kindle here. I'm reading my books and, and so on. But then, even these platforms, are not going to exist anymore because we're going to move to the mobile, the small screen. So a writer will need to adapt him or herself to the small screen. And this is how I see. But you're still going to see bookstores, you're going to see books. People, they talk, they say something. Oh, I like the smell of books. I don't remember reading a book and, and having this smell, you know? This is just an excuse. So, did I answer you? Different platforms, electronic book, but then something different. But book is not going to die. Opera did not die. Greek comedy and tragedy did not die. They are going to continue. Next. The gentleman there. <laughs> you are very serious, huh? <laughs> Mr. Kulho. Hey. Um, I have a question. So, you said before that in this age, we need to share, right? We need to. But for me, myself, Sharing is sometimes difficult because I have some thinking that uh, it could be causing this or that. Um, if it's something like inspirational, of course, I'd like to share it. But, you know, sometimes I, I don't want to share things in internet or maybe with, with people. And be, be specific. What you don't want to share? Yeah. Give my, I guess example. My question is. No. You, first, an example. An example. Um, maybe some ideas. Some ideas. Because I'm afraid that somebody can realize this idea, uh -huh. and then I will be just the one left with nothing. You know. I think some people will have the same opinion like me. And now my question to you is. Do you think we can really generalize the statement that uh, we need to share everything? No, we don't need to share our girlfriend. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, but, uh, 
but ideas, if you think that you have any new idea, you are lost because there are no new ideas. Someone said 4,000 years ago, there is nothing new under the sun. What you do is to recycle the same ideas. I can give you a very concrete example. The boson of Higgs. You know what the boson of Higgs is, right? So, at the same time, several people all over the world, at least eight people, had the same idea. But Higgs was the first one to put it in a concrete way. Who invented television? Several different people had the same idea. We know who invented the printing press, for example, because he had the technological means. So, I know a lot of authors, the first thing that they say is, I'm not going to give my ideas because someone is going to steal. It's so difficult to steal an idea because an idea, I have 10,000 ideas every 10 minutes. But I can only implement one idea every two years writing a book. So don't be afraid. If your idea is good, people are going, it's not that I'm naive. Huh? People are going there and to support your idea. They are not going to steal your idea. If they want to steal your idea, they will steal your idea, unless you keep it in your head. Uh, so sharing is not only about sharing, it's also about implementing something. Don't worry, share your idea, and you're going to see that people are, they are inner good. Next question, the gentleman behind. And then the next one, because then, uh, and then you move the, yeah. Uh, alô, uh, primeiro, obrigado pela, pela, pela palestra. Uh, so, I would like to ask you, uh, how do you, uh, what's your vision about the future of the publishing industry? That's what he, uh, okay. Like, now, now, yeah. now the, the physical books, but like we are moving to about the e-book and so industry. on. And yeah, I, I'm going to answer you, but the lady of the microphone, you probably to facilitate life. Okay, I get, start moving there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, my, my, my idea here. My, uh, lady. Oh, it's a man. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The bird. Yeah. So the publishing industry, I really don't know. I know the, the future of record business. I, I, I used to write uh, songs, lyrics for songs in Brazil, and then I work in a record company. And I saw this gigantic, solid, established industry collapse. Because they started to fight against the possibility of sharing. How do I see the book business today? More or less, as I see, they don't realize. It is a surprise for me, but they are trying to stop the unstoppable. Three days ago, I was talking to a publisher in Brazil. No, 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 to my agent, sorry. And she said, in Brazil, we fear that Amazon is going to be here before the end of the year. So, 
they are doing the best they can do to stop Amazon. A, it is impossible. B, they are not preparing themselves to adapt to this new reality. So in my opinion, the book business, the publishing houses, at least the publishing houses that I know, they're still very reluctant, but they are not stupid. What are the main question mark? How we are going to make money out of it, which is really something important. So they need to learn a new way to monetize. Well, publishing house. We all know that we can publish a book without a publishing house. You just go there, you put an EPUB, you put your book there, you sell. You don't have, you sell either by print on demand, HP does print on demand, or you sell through Kindle, Nook, iBookstore. So the publishing houses understand that theoretically they need to adapt themselves to the new reality. If they are doing this or not, it is too early to say. But they should do it, the sooner the better, or they are going to have the same destiny as the music, music industry. Oh. You have the microphone, but... Uh. Hello. I just want to know, you say that uh, literature starts with the transcription of the Holy Bible. So, no, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, carry on. So, I would like to know how we'll change the relationship between a new technology and religion. Okay. I, I did say that printing press started, not printing literature. Printing press, yeah, not literature. Literature starts back to the oral tradition. Yeah. It's funny that you touch the subject of religion and books. They are very noisy, it should be very noisy. <laughs> One, two, three, noisy. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> so, there are at least two religions that I'm Christian, huh? so I have a Pope that it is in the Vatican and he is the big boss. Whatever he says, whether I believe it or not, we have a hierarchy. But well, there are two religions. They don't have it. Judaism and Islam. What do they have? A book. They have only a book. Torah and Quran. That's why the word is so important, so important. Because if you change one sentence now, in 100 years from now, the whole paragraph will be changed. In 1,000 years from now, everything will be changed. So these two religions, and Judaism, I talk about a very ancient religion, they exist because one book exists. Islam exists because one book exists. Uh, so there is no structure like, like in Catholicism. Uh, if I understand you correctly, what is the connection between books and, and, and literature? Well, let's consider the sacred te texts, sacred texts, whether you believe it or not, it is your choice to believe or not, having nothing to do with literature. There are revelations. Having said that, as a writer, I really admire the way that they are written. It is so strong, so strong. Next. The gentleman here. Yeah. Um, 
you, I totally agree with the way you, you share your books, but uh, do you think you had the same success by starting, uh, by sharing it from the start? You, you are big now, so you can share it and sell more, but someone who starts and starts by sharing it and giving his work for free from the start, uh, it's very difficult. Yeah, it's I understand easiest your question. for you now What you because see is you're that now that you're rich, you can share, right? Which is not true because I write and you are here and this person composes. We want to do this because we want to express our souls. So I remember paying for my first book, not selling, huh? paying to have it published and then giving to people because I want people to read. So uh, this idea that you can do this only after you reach a certain level is simply not true because you do this because you have a compulsion to do it. You write a book. How could I ever imagine? I'm a Brazilian, you know? And in Brazil, there is no tradition of making money of, out of writing. So how could I ever imagine that I'll be here today talking to you and be as successful as I am? I was doing this because it was my personal legend, because my soul was there, because I wanted to do this. Huh? So, and then, of course, things, they adjust themselves. So if you are planning to write, for example, don't be afraid. Don't try to make money before you expose your soul, you expose whatever you are doing, just do it. And people will understand. And people will pay for content if they think the content is good. The gentleman here, the gentleman here. Microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Don't you think there's some hype on the sharing? Don't we have to go for the caring and, uh, and the daring? Because in German we say, Wissen wollen wagen, to know, to connect, to transcend. That is my first thing. So I think it's too much focus on sharing without context and without values. And the second, you speak about the mission of well, book Let culture. me answer the question, okay. the first. Repeat the three, the three in German. Wissen wollen wagen, war je der Ratspruch der Weisen. Okay, say it in, in, in the microphone because I don't think... No, no, in, in, in English In now. English. Knowing, connecting, transcending... Okay, okay, wait, okay. It's a poem. <laughs> the question of the gentleman is, I, I'm emphasizing on sharing and not in knowing. There is a Greek philosopher that says, let me see how much time do we have. Everything in this universe is a consequence of either chance or necessity. So you learn because all of a sudden you have this opportunity, this chance. And back to the question of the gentleman of ideas. Huh? The idea is there, everybody can see. But only a few people will understand this. So this is the first thing. There is not this idea, I know something. Because it is impossible to know something. I go back to alchemy. And I believe in the principles of alchemy. Everything is one thing only. 
So, we are here having this illusion that we are several people discussing a lot of different things, but the core of this is one thing. So, in the alchemy, they have this idea of anima mundi, the soul of the world. So, knowing is that moment that you go there by necessity or by chance and you learn. From the moment that you learn, you feel like, okay, I'm going to, to tell to my neighbor because I want to create a new business or because whatever. So this is the first thing. So I cannot emphasize knowing because either we know everything or we don't know anything. In writing books, I can give you an example. I sit down in front of the computer and I have just several ideas and then all of a sudden uh, this idea doesn't work, this idea doesn't work, this idea... But there is something called inspiration. Inspiration is breeze. And there is one idea that it was there in my unconscious mind that it is also yours. I don't want to go too much into this subject because it's a little bit too complicated to elaborate. And then you expire. But there are only four books or plots to be written. One is a love story between two people. The other is a love story between three people. The third is a struggle for power. And the fourth is a trip, a journey. All books that are in bookstores, since the beginning, they deal with one of the four subjects. Back to your idea. Oh, I have an idea I have to hide. We translate the same four stories. So knowing is, at the end of the day, being able to translate to your generation what you feel now. So what is the second part? Of, because we still have time for three questions. This transcending between cultural expressions, uh, symbols, icons, and indexes, when do you think we will come to new business cases to really bring this together? Because I think we have to expand the pr uh, solution space given all the problems in the world. Could, could you repeat? Because I could not hear. I was just uh, being challenged about the cultural expressions of symbol, icon, and index, the different ways we express. And you spoke about the book culture, and now we have the multimedia culture. And when do you think we will include the senses, the gestures, the motions? Because I think we have to do that to expand the solution place, uh, space in, you mean, in view as, of as, all as the problems we have. As for to change the social code, I, I, I personally believe that we need to reach a critical mass. How many people are necessary to reach this critical mass? I don't know. Ten, two, 500 million, 222. And then on the 23rd, everything changes. But I don't know. So I believe that one day we're going to reach this critical mass and everything will change. Overnight, overnight. It's not that you climb a step and then you build an airport. No. Oh, you, you wake up the next day and everything is changed. Next, the gentleman there. Two more questions. Thank, thank you very much. 
a, a majority of the world still lives in poverty without food and water. And most of them don't have internet or online access, and most of them can't even live in one year on what it costs to buy a computer. What advice do you have to the people sitting here to help break down that barrier and expand what we have here in this room to those places that have nothing? Uh, I believe that it's part of our soul, something called social consciousness. This egomania is disappearing. Now, I think a good example is, uh, is the campus party. People talking there, people talking there, 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 there. Everybody's here because you travel from distant places to gather here and to, to start discussing. And the next step is how powerful technology is to solve problems like basic problems, huh? hunger, water, sewage, shelter, etc. I belong to the board of a foundation and we take care of this. So what do we do? Oh, you have a very interesting idea about energy. Let's invest some money. You had a fantastic idea about human rights. Let's put some money here. You have, so at the end of the day, you realize that you're not alone in this world and we have this necessity to improve. How long will it take? I don't know, again. But I do believe, and I'm not naive, I'm not naive, sorry, I'm not naive at all, that we had a good impulse. Because if we go to internet, you say, oh, I want to do this and that for peace. Peace, I think it is an abstraction. I, I'm not into, in the peace thing. Huh? I'm not into the war thing either, but <laughs> peace is not, peace is a total abstraction. But I do believe, and you see people, how they want to participate. I'm not talking about click activists. I'm talking about going to places and acting and using your expertise to do it. Two more questions, the lady there. And then one more question. Uh, you said once that people should never uh, stop dreaming because once we do stop, then we lose ourselves. Um, and I was wondering, I might have a personal question. What's your personal dream? What's your big dream? What's something you still want to accomplish? May I leave this question to the end? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so one more question, final question. The, the guy, you decide. I'm not looking. That to, you decide. Choose someone. Hello, Mr. Coelho. Uh, Hi. Where, where are here. you? I'm here. Ah, okay. <laughs> I didn't. Um, this is happening Veronica sometimes. Veronica decides to die. Yeah. Uh, at first, I think um, the trend of printing books uh, will never die because uh, you can't get uh, original uh, signature Put on the e-book. Put the e microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yes, you, you can't get an uh, original signature on an e-book and you can't... Um, share uh, ebooks on a physical library with friends with a family so um, a book uh, which you can uh, show uh, you can proud of it and show something of uh, your own so um, yes and uh, the question is um, I think ebooks aren't uh, so easy to copy or uh, to, to uh, for piracy like uh, this books uh, like printing books but I think that the technology should help that um, piracy for printing books uh, should stop. And uh, do you have uh, some ideas how, how to stop that? No, I don't think uh, we're going to see, as I answered someone here, the gentleman, that printed books are going to die. No, like concerts, like opera houses, like opera houses consider a bookstore. Huh? And, uh, one, two, three.
Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, no. We don't accept the provocation anymore. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, you can sign e-books. They developed a new system. A, a, a very famous writer, sorry, Margaret Atwood, she is investing in a system that I can sign a book here for someone who is in Canada, for example. But this is my soul. I don't want to see this to die. I am a romantic, so I'm going to finish with a question about, about my dream, right? So I tell in most of my books that we should fight for our dreams, that we should stand for our dreams. And I had this strange dream since I was a young boy. I want to be a writer, which, which was totally impossible. My parents, they were desperate. They said, he's crazy. So they wanted me to be an engineer. And then they forced me. I was in a Jesuit school, imagine. Jesuit school, pa, 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 pa. Then I could not simply accept to sacrifice my life in the name of the dreams of my parents. That it is the easiest excuse you all use, we all use, oh, I'm not going to do this because I'm going to hurt people that I love. Don't say this to yourself. You don't hurt anyone when you do something that you love. You may scare them, they may be furious, but if they really love you, they will accept at the end. Because all they want is to see you happy. Huh? So, then, as for me, I was in a mental institution three times when I was 18, 19, and 20, because they could not control me. So they said, he's crazy. Then I start making songs. And then I start making money. From the moment I start making money, they said, he's not that crazy. Because he can live out of, you know, something that he does. And I did a lot. My, my sister is a scientist, a brilliant scientist. And in one year, by the way, the guy uh, died today, uh, 89, many years ago, the 22nd of August. And of course, classic overdrug, rock, death style. Uh, may God bless you, Jose. Uh, so, making money so they relax. And then there was a military dictatorship in Brazil. They started to look, ah, what is this? We don't understand. Rock and roll, this may be dangerous. So I was arrested three times. And that was experience of fear. And I spent seven years trying to overcome this fear. And for several moments in my life, I thought, enough is enough. I did all my crazy things, sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever. You mentioned I did it, you know? But now it is time to settle down, grow up, have a... <laughs> nine to five work. I tried, I tried, but I was so unhappy. So in 1986, 
I set out, I set out in a pilgrimage from France to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. I had money, I had love, I had a job, but I was not happy. And when I arrived in Santiago de Compostela, I said, now either I, for, I forget my dream or I'm going to fight for it. And I fought for it. And it was not easy. Don't think that all of a sudden everybody starts reading my books and I became an instant success. Here in Germany, my first book, book was published in 1995. I only hit the bestseller list in 98 or 99. Four years, you know, word of mouth, blah, 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 blah. But if I have one quality, I did not quit. I had my doubts. I fell out. I fell down. But I said, this is the meaning of my life, to fight for my dream. That's why I can easily tell you, fight for your dreams, because they did that for me. And thanks to this, I'm here talking to you today. So thank you all for your patience. Thank you, Paco, also for following your dreams. Huh? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.